So welcome to Boat Electrical Made Easy Part 5A. Please watch the first four parts of this video. Fault Diagnosis, the basics. Please remember this video is aimed at those amateurs who are learning, not you seasoned veterans of electrical work. So we have a couple of multimeters on the boat. Um, the first one that we use, which is our go-to multimeter, so the one that we do most of our troubleshooting with, is a cheap Unit T available on eBay. It's um, got a number of features which make it more user-friendly or quicker to use. The first one is that it has a hold button, a maximum minimum button, and we can select whether um, when we're measuring continuity it bleeps or not. It's quick and easy to use, but it doesn't measure DC volt uh, amps. It only measures AC amps through this clamp meter here. Okay. So the next one that we use, which when we when we're looking more in detail at things, is this one. This is uh, you know not budget but not expensive. I think this was about uh, twenty five pounds. So what's that? Uh, 20 US dollars something like that and this one has a lot more functions on it it also has a hold button but it can also um, check NPN or PMP transistors um, as well as doing other things it can, it can also measure DC amps through this um, third port here and we'll explain how this works in a short while so I guess what we ought to do is start with fault finding and the use of the multimeter because that's the thing that you're going to use on your boat the most. That's probably the first tool that you'll need when you get your boat or if you've already got a boat and you don't want to pay an electrician to come in. So let's run through how the multimeter. Let's look at the first of these two meters. This one's a fairly cheap um, unit T from eBay. Uh, it takes a couple of 1.5 volt batteries it's auto ranging so it's very easy to use in a situation where you want to diagnose things um, it only has a couple of features on the on the thumb wheel here which are volts DC volts AC ohms continuity and the continuity also has a bleeper on it um, 2 amps to 20 amps AC and 200 to 400 amps AC which you use this clamp on the end there you simply put the cable through the through the clamp in roughly the, that position and it will measure it for you so let's show you how this works so we've got a couple of batteries here uh, one D cell and one almost knackered uh, 9 volt battery the first thing we're going to do as with the other meters always black goes in common we've only got one hole on this one for measuring ohms uh, for measuring continuity and for measuring volts so the red goes in there we're going to be measuring voltage it's auto ranging we set it to auto range on volts DC let's measure this battery here and this battery here is putting out about 1.6 volts DC and this one we know is pretty knackered so let's try that get the auto ranging to zero out and this 9 volt battery is only putting out 4.5 roughly 4.5 volts but for demonstrations that's good enough um, one thing I should explain should you happen to get the positive and negative probes the wrong way around so let's put them on this battery here you won't actually damage the meter but what will happen is there'll be a little line that comes up in front of the numbers you see that 
So it says DC and there's a little line in front which tells you you have the probes around the wrong way and just to prove that I'll put them back around the right way. There we go and the little lines disappeared. So if when you're measuring DC you get that little line come up in front of the numerals then you have the, the positive and the negative around the wrong way. It still measures accurately but uh, just so that you know which one's which. It's a good handy little meter, it's very quick and easy to use. When you're using it on continuity you select continuity there, push that button which gives you an audible tone and when you touch these two together it buzzes which is really handy. Yeah, this is a good little meter. Oh, one thing I didn't explain with this meter as well as auto ranging um, should you fail to turn this one off and leave it on the bench turned on um, what will happen is after about four minutes it bleeps a couple of times and then it switches itself off so it doesn't use the batteries up but even so um, keep an eye on the batteries they uh, they do seem to discharge self discharge in these uh, meters uh, over a period of time and, and you need to check them every three to four months or whenever you use the meter but yeah handy meter quite cheap and very useful so that's our our budget one now a couple of things when you're buying leads they usually come with a set of fairly cheapish leads try and go for ones that have got um, a silicone insulated cable and silicone insulated probes uh, they're much more flexible when it's cold they don't get uh, twisted and, and crinkled and whatever and they're much more robust you can actually buy these separately and there's a common standard for these uh, for these plugins which most of the meters have let's have a word about accuracy these cheaper meters are probably one or two percent accurate for what you're going to need on a boat that's plenty accurate enough it's more of an indication rather than um, working on micro -cir circuitry where you need to have exact um, calibrated meters and if you want to have exact calibrated meters you need to go to something that's going to cost you 80 or 90 pounds something like a fluke but on a boat perfectly reasonable so this is the more complicated meter again it's it's not expensive but it's not budget um, it's somewhere in between the two it's got a lot more features on it so if we look it's not auto ranging and so when you're reading ohms it goes 0 to 200 0 to 2k or 2 kilo ohms 20 kilo ohms 200 kilo ohms or 2 mega ohms on the voltage DC band it starts at 200 millivolts then 2 volts, 20 volts, 200 and 1000. Now with an auto ranging multimeter you don't need to set the range. On one of these you do and what you want to do is to set the range to the highest voltage or slightly above the highest voltage you're expecting. I'll show you that in a moment. On AC it goes 200 up to 750 and then it has an amp scale so it starts off at uh, 10 amps here but the next one up is 200 milliamps so you need to be careful that you're using the right socket I'll show you that in a second 200 milliamps 20 milliamps 2 milliamps 2 microamps so the range goes the opposite way highest here lowest there. I won't go into HFE but this one's continuity this little emblem there is continuity and of course you know the ohms sign from when we did our earlier videos so once again same kind of connections the black always goes in the common 
and then depending on what you're measuring you use one of these two holes here one of these two sockets the one on this side on the right hand side is for volts ohms and milliamps so that's up to 200 milliamps if you're using if you're measuring more than 200 milliamps you use the second socket 10 AC sorry 10 amps DC so you use the second one generally you're going to be using this one and let's do the same test again let's get our 1.5 volt battery now we're expecting about 1.5 volts so what we'll do is we'll set it on the naught to 2 volts range and of course that's DC so we've got our leads we're just going to check and make sure they're okay and then once again we can put our positive to the positive negative to the negative and we're reading 1.588 volts from there okay so let's do that now with a simple 9 volt battery let's do the same again now remember this isn't auto ranging we're expecting up to 9 volts so we turn to 20 volts that's up to 20 volts and let's measure again and we've got 4.3837 volts so a slightly different reading from the other meter but it gives us an indication of roughly what that voltage is within a couple of percent once again if we swap over the polarity so we make this side negative and this side positive you'll see that the meter has a little line in front of the readout okay so that's how this machine works when measuring voltage okay let's look at measuring ohm so let's look at measuring resistance and we'll use both these meters to do this but before I get started just one thing that's has become obvious and apparent is when I was doing the first take I noticed that the resistance uh, measured by one meter was different to the resistance measured by another beta and um, I suspected that the batteries inside of this meter were uh, were flat when I actually took them out they'd got the green death and uh, even though they were Duracell batteries which is what we tend to use um, one of them had leaked and I'd got to use some uh, toothpaste on the end of a cotton bud to clean up the contacts before the meter went back together again with new batteries so let's get started measuring resistance this here is a spare uh, heater plug for our uh, warm air diesel heater I'm expecting the resistance on that to be quite low probably less than an ohm um, but that's just through experience let's actually measure let's start with the automatic meter first sorry the self-ranging meter first so we're going to be measuring ohms black goes in the common red goes in the ohm scale which is this one here and it's auto ranging so we just switch it to ohms we touch the two together and we're getting zero so we know that that's okay and let's measure ohms through this plug so we're measuring not only the resistance of the heater element but the wires to it as well so if you look at the meter now it's hovering around 0.4 of an ohm which is what I'd expect for a diesel heater let's turn that off and let's use the other meter it's slightly different once again black goes in the common and we're measuring ohms 
So the red goes on the ohm scale and we're expecting this to be quite a low resistance, less than 200 ohms. So we'll go on the 0 to 200 ohms scale. We touch the two together and that is not a very good contact. There we are. It's reading 0 0.01 which is probably just the resistance in the leads or in the in the meter and then across the terminals again and that's bottoming out at 0.5 of an ohm so the way that these meters work is that a small amount of current from the batteries inside the meter will go down the lead through the component and measure the resistance and then back up the black lead the electronics inside then does the same as the calculations we did in video number two and works out the resistance So here's an interesting thing, everything has a resistance, including you. Now don't worry, this isn't dangerous. The voltage inside here is only 4.5 volts, or thereabouts. But I've set the scale to 2 mega ohms. Watch what happens when I lick my fingers. And connect. There you are. Proof that I have quite a low resistance. <laughs> Let's try it on kilo ohms. There we go. So I'm around 73 kilo ohms of resistance between my two wet fingers. Don't read anything into that. Just a bit of fun. So two different meters. This one is, is the preferred one for us. I know it doesn't measure DC amps. It would be handy if it did, but it would be three times the price. And we measure DC amps on the boat in uh, different ways through the boat's electronics. Uh, for example, our battery monitor tells us how, much, how many amps we're drawing on any system as we turn it on. And our solar also tells us uh, how many amps we're using and um, through our Victron Bluetooth uh, app. So, so, to illustrate fault finding and how I do it, I've made up this simple circuit and there should be a illustration of that in the video coming up in the corner. So here would be our domestic battery which would be 12 or 24 volts, negative and positive. We would then go to a distribution board with a fuse or a fuse and breaker switch and we would have our load in this case it's a lamp but it could be a motor or something else electrical if you have breakers uh, or switches on a distribution board you normally have a little lamp which lights and tells you that power is going to the component if it's a breaker it will automatically flick off and if it's a switch with a fuse, then the fuse will blow if there's a fault. So, I've put a fault into this circuit. I know where it is, but together we're going to find out where the fault is, and I'll show you the way I would do it. So we've connected up our multimeter with the black in the common and the red in the volts, continuity and ohms. And first we're going to measure voltage. So we use the V sign with the straight line and the dotted line underneath it. We switch our circuit on and our lamp is not lighting. So the first thing we need to do is to find out if there is a supply to the lamp because if there's a voltage going to it, it should be working. So positive probe on the positive, 
negative probe on the negative and our auto ranging is flicking through but not finding anything. We know we haven't got a supply or a complete circuit somewhere near this bulb. So I would go back to the negative of the battery and then start testing away from the bulb. Now the first thing we know is that we've got about 4 volts coming out of this battery. And lo and behold, on the positive side of this battery of this bulb, we've actually got 4.3 volts. So that eliminates both the fuse, which we can see hasn't blown, it eliminates the connections all the way to the bulb. So we know that the switch is working, the connections are good here. Whoa, hang on, stop the bus. Let's look at this again. We know the fault is between these two points, but what if we hadn't found live supply at the lamp? We'd simply have worked our way back down the positive supply line towards the battery. When we got the correct voltage reading, we'd know that we've just gone past the fault within the circuit. Does that make sense? So if all of this part of the circuit is okay and it's supplying positive power to the bulb or to the load, we know that the fault must be between the bulb and the negative of the battery. So here's what I would do next. I would turn this switch off, possibly remove the fuse as well, and I'm now going to go to continuity on my multimeter and I'm going to check between the negative of the battery and the negative terminal of the load or the bulb. So the reason that I have turned the switch off is because when you're measuring continuity you must not have current flowing through the circuit. So from the negative of the battery to the negative of the bulb we have no continuity. Let's double check. No continuity. So what has that proved? Well we know that we're getting a supply voltage to the load or to the bulb. But we are not got a complete circuit between the negative of the battery and the negative of the bulb. Turn our meter off and let's have a look. Let's remove this terminal and the terminal looks okay, nice and clean. Let's see if there is continuity between this terminal and the battery. So we've gone to continuity again. We go from the negative of the battery to the negative supply terminal. And again, no continuity. So we've eliminated all of this part of the circuit. What we could do is we could measure the resistance in this bulb and make sure that it's working. But because we've eliminated all this part of the circuit, it's not necessary. So the fault we know is either between this terminal here on the battery, the negative, and this terminal here. And I'll let you in to a little secret. What I did was I removed the copper part from this terminal to illustrate that the fault could be either in this cable or in that joint. And just to prove that that's correct, if I go from the negative of the battery again, and I go to the end of this copper wire, we have continuity. Now these type of terminals are quite often the source of faults on boats. Either the terminal starts to corrode, it gets salt water or humidity in it, or if you're not using tin cables, these copper strands can start to corrode within the terminal. So, just to prove that that is actually where the fault is, I'll now repair the fault and we'll see if our bulb comes up. So, with the fault repaired, a new terminal, our bulb lights. So, that's the basics of fault finding. Now, this would be part of a much bigger circuit, perhaps like 
this one I'll put an illustration up but it's like eating an elephant you can't eat a whole in elephant at one sitting but you can eat a bit of an elephant and this is a bit of one big circuit diagram just broken down into simple parts so that you can understand each one of these circuits there might be you might have 30 or 40 or even 50 different circuits and some of them might be switching relays in order to switch high loads but this is part of that circuit diagram and it, they all work in the same way positive supply a fuse or breaker a switch or switch breaker a load and then a return path to the negative of your battery now if this bulb had been faulty when we measured the voltage across the two terminals the positive and the negative and we got a completed circuit we would know straight away that it was either the connections to the bulb or so that's part 5a we couldn't cover all the things we wanted to cover in this video as it was getting incredibly long well for us um, so part 5b will be out in a couple of weeks time um, one of the things meanwhile we'd like to do is to make a recommendation to you and that's for this book by Nigel Calder this is quite an old edition from 1998 um, there are a lot more recent editions it's a really good book it covers all the systems both mechanical and electrical on your boat and it explains them in ways that uh, you'll understand with diagrams and uh, and some fault finding charts as well logic charts so that's the book boat owners mechanical and electrical by Nigel Calder um, there'll be more in this series um, we'd like to cover AC um, and give you some tips and tricks uh, on diagnosing so that you don't have to go through necessarily the logic that we've shown you in this video uh, so until next time uh, from us on the island of Ponza at Anchor it's uh, sail safe give us a thumbs up like and subscribe and share with your friends thanks for watching